Studio B at KPRC Channel 2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life on this Tuesday, September 1st. Can you believe it, folks? If only it felt like September. I know. It's blazing out there. But doesn't it give you hope, though? Just I mean, sort of. <laughs> Fall is such, I mean, summer is such a long season for us. Maybe by November. It'll cool down. I don't know, because you know, well, there's no Halloween, right? I mean, ha I mean, because usually people are sweating in their costumes. I'm not canceling <laughs> Halloween. I'm just saying I doubt that there's going to be trick or treating. <laughs> I was going to ask, did you hear something? But we are I still didn't? dressing up. We are going to dress up. Oh, we are too, for sure. Yeah. Even if we can't go trick or treating because of COVID, right? We'll do what? a virtual trick or trick or treat session. Yeah, absolutely. Why are do you we know talking about? Costume? I don't know. It makes me feel like it's cooler outside. Why are we talking about Halloween today? Oscar's no, going to be don't. involved in our Halloween costume. Just saying. I do love a good. I do love a good theme party. We need party. to think about what we're going to do. We celebrate Halloween in our house. We celebrate it all year long. We like to just get dressed up. We all did. The time. Our friends are producing this like Princess Bride socially distant video. So this weekend we dressed up like Brandon dressed as Wesley and had the wig, Stop it. And, like the mustache. I and love everything. it. Oh yeah, we like to dress up. It's, it's fun. so fun. Yeah, it makes AJ, life more interesting. He's ready. It's September first. He's saying, you know, let's just pull out the Halloween decorations. I mean, oh, they're out wow. and available to buy everywhere. I know. Can you They believe? have been for weeks. Yeah, this morning I saw Halloween candy at the store. <laughs> it's a thing. Better stock up now, everybody. Well, we, we're going to play a little school on today's show, which is why we have our dry erase boards. We do have a lot of really fun topics to get to and a fun little game we're going to play in just a moment. But before we begin, very important breaking news on this September 1st. Yes. Eight years ago, I was in Salt Lake City as my third niece, Scarlett, was being born. And today is her eighth birthday. Scarlett, I know you're watching and looking through my phone and finding all of these... <sighs> Little photos, look at that little nugget. And she has just grown up before our eyes. She is so precious. That curls, the smile. Oh, I love it. Happy birthday, sweet Scarlett. Yeah, they are so much fun. And we cannot wait until uh, Scarlett, along with her other three sisters, oh. can come back to Houston Life. Maybe they'll sing for us. You know, I they're know. constantly doing the YouTube thing. Very talented. They are very happy, talented. happy birthday. Did you talk to her yet? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we chatted on the phone this morning. You know, I sent her some Sprinkles cupcakes. They don't actually have them in Utah. You can overnight them now. Yep. I know, so it's a good. genius thing. Check it out, folks. Well, listen, speaking of singers, we're going to meet a family on today's show called the Jones Family, and they have been singing Courtney together for three decades. And what's really remarkable, so inspiring and moving, four of their family members contracted COVID-19. And, you know, during this time, the family never gave up faith. Today on Houston Life, we're going to hear how they're continuing to spread hope through song. And uh, I think they're going to actually treat us to a little performance oh, as well. So inspiring. I love it and can't wait to hear from them. The entire family, by the way, we've got all of their names on a card. I mean, they are all going to appear here on Houston Life. It's a big family. It's a big family. Can't wait to meet them. Also, as we're talking about birthday treats and being just sweet, look at that. It's mm. Sweet Treat Tuesday. Mm. We have a local self-taught baker and uh, Vontae Davis chats with Lauren Kelly about her sweet business, Sweetie V's Dessertery. And she's also showing us how she makes the ultimate cookie sandwich. Ooh. I mean, y'all, seriously, that looks amazing. So what's inside the sandwich? Like a cream filling or an ice cream or what? I guess we'll find out, right? Whatever you want. M&M's, chocolate chips. I mean. Oh, oh, I'll take all those things. I love it all. You know, I'm, I'm really working on my little COVID belly, so a few, <laughs> few extra cookies might help me just a few months along here. Well, Preparing for winter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess that is the good news. Yeah. We didn't have to worry about swimsuit season this year, right? Vacation, canceled. Canceled. What vacation? Mm. Didn't happen. So, Courtney, you and I have known each other now for quite some time, a few years, and you know that something really bugs me, and it's when people are grammatically challenged. And full disclosure, sometimes I'll see a clip of Houston Life and I'll think, what What did I say? I mean, I say messed up things quite often. Well, we all make mistakes, You right? just sort of like slip up mindlessly. You say something. But I have a few like big pet peeves. I would say one of the biggest ones is the you and I and you and me thing. Uh, when myself? People, or myself. 
So people, you know, will post something on Facebook. They're like, this is my mom and I on vacation. Mm. Re really, this is I on vacation? Oh, here's a picture of I on vacation. <laughs> Drives me crazy. Right. Or myself, as you mentioned. Myself. Call myself. Or Derek. I hate. Talk to Courtney or myself. Yes. Talk to myself. Hey, Courtney, if you forget, could you just text myself later? Yes, I will. Bugs. Uh, <laughs> bugs. <laughs> bugs. And regionally, you know, we have there, there are things that people say down here in Texas that I had, <laughs> I had never heard until I moved here. Right, but right. But there are things on the West that people say, Absolutely. people on the East Coast, depending Midwest, on yes, where you exactly. are from, we all have these words and phrases. So today, our producers cooked up this idea. Producer Aaron cooked up an idea that we're not just going to have a grammar lesson. We're actually going to put some words and phrases up on the screen that we're probably, or many of us, are probably all using wrong or in the, incorrectly. In, incorrectly or maybe we're saying it wrong right uh, so the way it's gonna work is and I have a very basic understanding of this game correct me producers if I'm wrong but I believe that the wrong word or phrase will pop up on the screen yes and then you and I have to actually write down the correct version of either the word or the phrase yes on our whiteboard. On our whiteboard. And this is all based on, this is not, this is very scientific. So it's all based upon a Reader's Digest article and not something that our team dreamt up. So this is legit. Okay, true. So I, I believe if we're ready to go, let's go ahead and put that first thing up on the screen. The question, et cetera. Oh, so we're supposed to write what that word actually would be. Oh. Yeah, this one. Oh, this is gonna show that I'm like bad spelling, I think. Ugh. Wait, we're not doing the meaning, we're saying, oh, it is two words, okay, I did do it right. Oh, I mean, well. I, I have two words written down. <laughs> Et cetera, yeah, E-T. Not X cetera. Yeah. E T. I actually wrote it as one word though. So it's two words like E T. Yes. Space, et cetera. Yeah. Et cetera. Right? Okay, so you got it right. Good job. Et cetera. I mean, ooh. Ex, that, every time. Especially is another one. Oh. Especially. How about X? Espresso. Oh, it's When I order my espresso on the rocks. There is no X in espresso, people. Okay. No X in there. Okay. Well, that was a good one. Hey, what do we need these? Do we need these cards for anything? These are the answers. So we're not to look. So the answer is here. This one gets pronounced incorrectly more than it gets spelled incorrectly because in writing, it tends to end up abbreviated as ETC, but it's pronounced et cetera. I remember there was a really great um, Saturday Night Live skit with Billy Crystal. <laughs> he had the... I'm just going to anyway. put this away and listen. <laughs> it's going to be a long story. Never mind. What was the guy's no, name? tell me everything. He was bald. I wish my mom was here right now. Um, he did... Oh, he was in a movie. I'm so much... <laughs> We're moving on. I don't know. This is he was in a movie. Oh, that guy. <laughs> I yeah, I know exactly who you mean. He's genius. Yes. He's really, really Billy good. Billy Crystal is really funny. This is one of those conversations we're just going to take offline. We'll talk about it another time. <laughs> Join Courtney later on Facebook Live. To talk about when she nothing. she has more time to research <laughs> what she's actually trying to say. Okay. <laughs> Should we move on to the next, next one? Next one. Next question. Okay, we're going to put it up on the screen. Safety, Safety deposit. deposit box. Okay. Oh. Oh, man. <laughs> Is this three words? I think it's a safe <laughs> deposit box. Oh, that well, that's what I wrote, too. A safe deposit box. Because you're depositing your things in the safe. Right. So, let's see. We should have the answer here. We are correct. That is correct. Because it's a box in which you make a safe deposit. Right. Oh. Not okay. a safety Not deposit. Not a safety. Okay. All right. Okay. We're moving on. This, that's very nice. This is safe very deposit box. intriguing. You know what? That's yeah. That's very good. Because that, that's one of those things that I would probably say. I'm sure I've and said. I would, and I would question like, oh wait, was that right or was that wrong? I'm sure I've said safety deposit. Safe, <laughs> safe deposit box. Yes. Okay. okay. The next one, irregardless. That's it's a word from um, Mean Girls, the only movie I've ever seen. Isn't it? Isn't it what? 
what? Nothing. You just, it's regardless, right? Regardless. Okay. Yeah. Not irregardless. Yeah, irregardless is not a word. Okay. Yeah, irregardless is acknowledged as a word, but it's still improper. You know, I actually I had someone... Time. What? I hear that all the time, you right? You irregardless? Yes. So the thing is, in the movie Mean Girls, there is a character who uses this word, but she's using it... The whole point she was scripted to use the word is because... She's... <laughs> she doesn't understand that it's not a word. This is not a word. Regardless is... The word. the word. But what oftentimes ends up happening is so many people start using a word incorrectly or pronouncing it wrong that then it becomes part of the vernacular and it ends up in the dictionary, like the word nuclear. Yes. So many people said nuclear, that it be which is not, I mean, that's not right. Right. But it became, you know, it became a, an acceptable pronunciation. An acceptable And it mistake. got, yes, okay. put into the dictionary. Okay. Okay. Moving on, number four. Oh, this one this. bugs me. Should of? Mm -mm. Okay, I was worried that this would be more difficult. This is. There's no such thing as should of. Should of. Should have, right? Should have. Okay. Should have, and let's see, I have a write up here. Should have, would have, and could have. No of in, oh, oh yeah. I, I, I see it in should writing have. all the time. Could of, should of, have, could have, would have. have. Isn't that that, you know? Yeah, but that but it's a contraction, right? Apostrophe V-E, would that be an acceptable right. contraction? Right. Yeah, okay. Should have. Okay. Gosh, what if we got all these wrong? That would be so No, there's one more left and I'm nervous. Poisonous. Question four is poisonous. Wait, so it's a word? You mean poison like the band? Instead of instead of poisonous, uh, like it's a poisonous. You should use a different word instead of poisonous. I don't get it. Something is not poisonous. Like deadly. Oh, oh, think about a snake. Venomous. <laughs> deadly. I don't know. I put deadly. <laughs> I put deadly. Well, I. Venomous. I wrote venomous. Deadly? Okay, well, let's see. Okay, the answer is venomous. Poisonous oh. refers to something that is toxic if you eat it. Venomous describes something that oh. is poisonous if it bites oh. you. I'm not as dumb as I think I am. So snakes can be venomous. They cannot be poisonous. Okay. Venomous is Maybe we needed a full sentence on that one. It was yeah, a little confusing. So I think I described the game incorrectly. <laughs> Okay, what's the last wrong. one? Okay, the last one. Oh. <laughs> is a, what? A doggy dog world. So that's the incorrect phrase. <laughs> a doggy dog world. I don't know if this is right. Oh, this is going to sound real... S what? It'll be good. You ready? Ready for the reveal? Is it supposed to be like hot diggity dog? I don't know. I wrote this dog eat dog world. Is that right? A dog eat dog world. I think that's correct, right? Okay. Because it just means that, I mean, it's it's a nasty world. Like it's dog, every man for himself, for himself. right? Okay. Oh. A dog eat dog world. This type of error is known as an egg corn. Reshapes an established word or phrase phonetically without changing the actual meaning of the phrase. Oh, okay, I get it. But I've, so a dog eat dog world. Not a doggy. It would be like you've probably heard for all intents and purposes. Yes. But somehow that's been blended Intensive. incorrectly into for all intensive purposes. Yes. I think the next next game we should play is um, the song, like the messed up song lyrics that you think you know the words to a song oh, and what yeah. it actually is to what it, what you've been saying for years. You know, especially when I was a kid and I would sing along to so many songs and then I got a little bit older and Realized. all of these realizations one has like, oh my gosh, that's what they've been saying this entire time. Right. I can't think of one off the top of my head though. I can, but I can't say it on TV, but it's a Benny and the Jets song. Can you give us a hint? Electric. I don't know. It's not the right. I don't think Is it's the right. Is that Electric Avenue? Who no, sings that's that? Eddie Grant. <laughs> oh, I don't know anything. You, you know, know me. I don't know any pop culture references typically. So there's a, there's a song, Elton John's song, Benny and the Jet. 
jets, jet, jets. Now we're going to be so careful I about know. what we say. And in it, it's electric something. And I always heard one word, and I don't think it's right. There's no way it's right. I didn't even look it up, but... I'm going to have to look it up now. I know. We also want to know from our viewers if there's a word or a, a phrase out there that you might have uh, found out that you have been using incorrectly. We want to know. And I think because we asked this question on our Facebook page right. earlier, I think we've already been getting some really fun responses. So producers, uh, anytime they're ready to put up there, just let us know because we would love to share some of them with you. Aaron was telling me some good ones. Some funny ones? Some really okay. good ones. Like, they're definitely Earlier. working on uh, on getting that for us. I think it's coming. I think it's coming. A, no. It's no. It's mm -mm. not. Oh, there it is. There we go. Okay. Well, that's that's just a nice blue screen with some tiny writing, which I can't see. Um, it looks like oh, New Braunfels is not pronounced New Bronzefuls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what, <laughs> Kelly? Yeah, you're not alone. We we even had some coworkers who said it incorrectly. Oh, this is a yeah, good one. Yeah, this Courtney. is a good one. So this is from Barbara, nipped in the butt. Yeah. Bud as in the flower, LOL. In my oh defense, my English is not my first language. Bud is in flower. <laughs> yeah, I imagine like a dog biting you on the on the backside. Marte writes in for all intents and purposes. Oh yeah, the one we just discussed. Yeah. All these years I thought it was for all intensive purposes. Like intensive care. Vaseline intensive care <laughs> lotion. <laughs> It's a We've all said it. It is a different thing. Yes. Okay. Well, keep those comments coming. Um, that's that's a lot of fun. It, it was does, fun. It, it does make you stop and think, though, right? Oh, absolutely. We could do an entire show about things that uh, that people say incorrectly, ourselves included, right? Yes. I mean, we've said. I mean, we're all human. Know, we're all human. Here's we a picture of I mistakes. on vacation. Don't and forget myself. to call myself <laughs> if you have any questions. Oh, it it is like nails, nails on, on the a chalkboard. chalkboard. I it know. just bugs. And I see it on Facebook and Instagram every... Oh, a part. That's a big one, too. A part. I am so glad to be a part of this group. And they write a part as one word. A part literally means separate from people. Right. It's, to, it's a separate. space mm -hmm. part. You are a space part of this group. You are not a part of this group. Or I love unless when you're separate from it. is, like, complaining... And then they they don't spell your y o u r e oh. y o u r correctly or there, and they have like grammatical issues there in their sentence. It's okay. hard to take you seriously. We're get, we're getting a hard rap. We need to change <laughs> the subject now. Moving on. Keep those comments coming, please. And after the break, meet the Sugarland mom delivering hope to at-risk children, one pair of shoes at a time. That's next. Welcome back. This back to school season, a Sugarland woman is on a mission to help those in need one step at a time. I love this story. Many families have trouble covering even the basics like shoes. Stacey Bourgeois, CEO and founder of Soul Loved, joins us now with details on how we can all help. Stacy, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Well, tell us your story about Soul Loved. I know that you started in 2013. Where did it all begin? Well, so we actually started on the streets of Houston. Um, many years ago, we, several of us would go out on the streets and we would bring shoes to the homeless along with a few other things, but um, learned really quickly that there's a lot of homeless individuals out there walking around barefoot or in flip-flops or just with socks on their feet and realized that they need shoes to be safe. And I understand that on one of these very first uh, trips out, when your eyes were really opened, you met a woman uh, who was barefoot. And what happened then? Right. So on one of our outings to deliver things, um, various items to the homeless, including shoes, we were packing up one night to go home and looked down the alley and there was a young girl walking towards us. And I noticed immediately that she was barefoot and asked her, where her shoes were. She actually came to us looking for water, food, asking if we had anything to give her. And um, we didn't, you know, we had given everything out that night. And she said that she didn't have shoes. She had just left. She was new to the streets and only had with her the things that were in her um, small bag. So I, after a few minutes, we decided, we came to the conclusion that we both wore about the same size shoe. So I said, well, I'm just gonna take my shoes off 
and why don't you try these on? And she was pretty insistent at first, didn't want to do that, didn't want to take my shoes from me. And so I said, well, how about this? If they fit, then you can have them. And if they don't, then I'll take them back. And so she agreed to that and she tried them on. And immediately when she put them on, I knew they fit. She had a big smile on her face and a few tears in her eyes as well, but her whole posture changed. And um, she said they fit. And so I just hugged her and I said, look, you know, you're gonna be on the streets tonight. I don't want you barefoot. You've got to put these shoes on. And um, she took them and we hugged. And, you know, I, I knew right then that I needed to make that my mission. Um, like I said, there are a lot, uh, a lot of homeless people uh, in Houston. Many of them do not have shoes uh, at all. And so I told my husband that night on the way home, I said, you know what, we're gonna just start bringing shoes out here to him, out to these homeless um, men and women on the street that, um, that they just can't be barefoot. So that's what we did. And it's, it se- sounds so simple, but yet it was so touching and, and- between that that moment between the two of you and really your mission has now grown you work with schools you work with teachers and nurses to find out who needs these shoes and and talk to us about that because um the 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 need is very wide as well for children that's right it's i had i really had no idea that there was such a need with children in schools um we are based we live in sugarland so we are based out of sugarland fort Bend county and shortly after that night that was in 2016 so shortly after that night i um was introduced to a social worker in our school district who had asked if we had ever gotten children's shoes donated before which we had not so she quickly told me about the need in their school district and asked if we could possibly get some shoes together for their back to school event just in a few short months. So we scrambled, you know, we weren't even a 501c3 at that time, but we scrambled together, me and a few of the girls in in Soul Love. And after some fundraisers and um, shoe drives, we're able to get enough shoes together to put on hundreds of children's feet at that event. And I'll tell you that event for me was the eye opener um, because just as exactly like when the when i met the homeless girl and we put the shoes on her feet and she was so excited that's the same response you get with these kids um there's just such a huge need um so at that moment we just said okay maybe our shift our focus needs to shift to schools low-income schools title one schools in our area and started reaching out to nurses social workers teachers just to get the word out, to let them know, hey, we're here. If you have children and students in your class that are in need, please reach out to us. And it's it's really just grown from there. So it's not really just our school district anymore. It's not just Fort Bend County, even though that's where our primary focus is because that's where we live. It's now reached, you know, we've been into HISD schools, Humble, Kingwood, Needville, um, Lamar Consolidated. So. It's really grown. And Stacy, we are out of time, but we do want to put some information up on the screen. Our viewers okay. can see you guys are doing a drive. So if anyone out there wants to get involved, you can drop off new shoes Sunday starting at 9 a.m. until noon right there at the Greatwood Recreation Center, 7225 Greatwood Parkway in Sugarland. You can also visit our website, HoustonLife.tv, if you would like to be connected to the cause to make a, a financial donation, because I understand $20 can buy a pair of shoes for a child. So Stacy. Mm-hmm. Bourgeois, Soul Love CEO and founder. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for being with us, Stacey. And still ahead, we are continuing the inspiration of family of gospel singers. They're going to share their message of hope after overcoming COVID. We'll be right back. Now let's get a check of today's headlines with Keith and Christine, head of Channel 2 News at 4. Hey, guys. Hey, how are you all doing? Good to see you on this Tuesday. Yeah, hey, so if you're looking to save some money on big box items this weekend, this is definitely the weekend four with Labor Day coming up. Coming up at four, consumer expert Amy Davis is going to show us what should definitely be on your shopping list this Labor Day weekend as stores are dropping prices big time, and you can see which items are going to have the hottest deals. And Keith, speaking of hot. Yeah. Oh, hey, let's bring in, yeah, let's bring in a big guy. 
I like that transition. Oh. I like that. <laughs> now, I tell you what, it's way too hot out there. Look at these numbers. 99 in Conroe, 97 Houston, Columbus, Brenham, Huntsville. And look at the way it feels out there. 112 in Brenham, Palacios, 107 in Houston, 109 in Katy, Conroe, and Columbus Heat Advisory through 8 o'clock tonight. So be prepared. It's going to be another warm evening and overnight. Up to the north, there are flash flood watches. Look at some of this rain. In Oklahoma, they've had 6 to 7 inches of rain since yesterday, 3 to 5 inches around Dallas and we could get a piece of that action as we get into tomorrow. So I'll go over that coming up at four. Also the tropics, tropical depression 15 and Nana formed today as a tropical storm. 50 mile an hour winds. That's a well formed system. It's moving toward Belize. I'll also track that. Nana. Okay. I know uh, we actually have a Nana in our family. I don't know if you do, but there you go. Yeah, now we sure, all have one. I'm sure she's sweeter than that storm right there, I'm sure. <laughs> <Absolutely>. yeah. <laughs> all right, thank you, Frank. Also coming up at 4 o'clock, a story that is sure to be music to your ears. A 10-year-old drum protege drawing more than 2 million views on Twitter. Take a quick listen. Wow. Okay, she is wow. jamming, and you can tell she loves it, too. That's 10-year-old Nandi Bouchelle rocking out on the drums. And check this out. She is summoning a rock star to a drum battle in the process. Coming up at 4, see who she is challenging and how that rock star is reacting to it. Look at her go. She's jamming. Some My serious goodness. talent. <laughs> Guys, back to you. That's impressive. We've got to get her on Houston Life. Maybe she's too famous already. Maybe. <laughs> Girls can views? rock out. I, I love know. it. Look at her. I love it. <laughs> All right, guys. We will see you at 4. Still ahead on Houston Life, home-baked goods delivered. Get this straight to your door. We'll have the story behind Houston's own Sweetie V's dessertery next. And as we go to break, here's our Tip Tuesday with one hour air conditioning and heating of Houston. If you're looking to stay school cool this summer while saving money, the pros at one hour have some tips to remember. And today's tip is a reminder to clean those air filters regularly. You can lower your energy use anywhere from 5 to 15 percent just by replacing dirty or clogged filters. And be sure to schedule regular maintenance on your home's air conditioner. That service can help identify the smaller problems before they they become big ones. It can also help ensure that your system is running as efficiently as possible. Also consider a programmable thermostat. These modern thermostats have the ability to help save you money on your electric bill and also, of course, conserve energy. And don't forget to seal those ducts. Le uh, leaking ducts can account for about 30% of an AC system's energy use. And finally, use ceiling fans to help reduce the amount you use your air conditioning if you'd like to learn more. Contact the pros at one hour by calling 855-1-HOUR. And we'll be right back. Just when you thought it couldn't get any sweeter, we're about to with this next segment. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> Lauren Kelly introduces us to a local baker following her dreams by creating delicious treats. here with Vontea and she's the founder and baker behind Sweetie V's Dessertery, one of our favorite things to talk about here on Houston Life. And this is so cool. Vontea, you were in college in 2015 and you decided, you know what, I need to do something else. You were going for your undergrad at U of H, but you thought, you know what, it's time for me to pursue my dreams of baking. And that's exactly what you did. So tell us all about it. Hi, Lauren, to start off. And <laughs> I decided to start it in 2015, and it was a big leap, and I was nervous about it, but I did it, and I'm so happy I did. So you started off baking on your Easy Bake Oven. I don't want to call out your age, but I love that. And once you go to the 90s, baby, that Easy Bake <laughs> Oven, you're like, you know what, this is really what I want to do. So you were pretty young when you started baking, weren't you? I was. So I did an Easy Bake Oven, even in Girl Scouts. I did cookies and all of that. Anytime I was able to get in the kitchen with my mom, I took the chance. So I know that you've got the cookies, you've got the brownies. What else is on your menu? On my menu, cakes, cupcakes, cake pops, whatever my imagination and whatever my sweet tooth is, I'll go for it and try it. I'm just going to show this beautiful package right here, you guys. If you can see it there, um, one of those cookies has gold flakes on it. Oh, my yes, God. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay. 
That one's for me. So, Vontaea, what you have given to me is the sweet kit here. And what's going to happen is you're going to show me how to make one of your cookies. Yes. And which is, is that what we're going to be making? Yes, we are. So I've got my cookie station set up, and I am ready for you guys to tell me what to do. OK, Lauren. So take your cookies out of the bag. OK. These are the two big ones. Your toppings, you can put them in the little cupcake containers that I gave you. Yes. OK. So you can spread those out and, and then pour your toppings in those. Okay, these in. And we have my favorite, the sprinkles. And next, open up your um, icing. Am I gonna spoon the icing into this piping bag? Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> you can do a swirl if you want. This is where you have fun. You're just okay. like a kid again. And voila, it looks like a bullseye. Hey. <laughs> so okay. right now, if you want, you can add a little bit of your chocolate chips or your sprinkles inside. Can I put a little bit of everything? Yeah, go yeah. for it. You should see my desk right now. <laughs> and I'm going to gently put the other cookie on top. OK. Smush it. Oh, yes. So we have this <laughs> right now. So now, just go for it again and put more, more toppings on the side. This is the best day ever. <laughs> OK. Awesome. Good job. Ta -da. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> now that we get to eat it. Yes, we can eat Let's it. Try it. <laughs> oh, my god. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, that's so just rude. Funny, right? Eating in front of all of Eating us. Eating in front of all of us. <laughs> that's all I can think about now. That looks delicious. So good. And it's so happy so for nice. Her. Yeah. yeah, great when we see people following their dreams and it turns into a business. That's fantastic. Very nice. Go ahead. After the break, keeping the faith, how one local family found strength in song. Yeah, to overcome COVID and also inspire others. That's next. <laughs> It's a family hey. answering the call. Lord, I thank you for all you've done. The Jones family singers traveled the world and the internet to spread faith and hope. But in late June, their father, the family leader, Bishop Fred Jones Sr., and four of his daughters got the coronavirus. All but one daughter were hospitalized. The smell was so bad. The stench of sickness and despair, but they all kept faith. We spoke with Sabrina Freeman the day she got home. Her sisters were cleared too. Her father, though, stayed, fighting to breathe. Today, I feel so good, and all my sisters and brothers, we all cried. They are both with us. Today, I feel wonderful. Worlds of improvement after weeks of uncertainty. He was telling us that he had seizures. And when death came knocking, the enemy came to my bed and said to me, it's over. What are you going to do now? You trusted in God and look where you're at. They let faith answer the door. I said, one day I am going to die, but not now. The family asked for prayer, not just for their father, but for all affected by COVID. And soon enough, on July 19th, their dad came home. Going through the valley of the shadow of death, I didn't remain. God brought me out. For Houston Life, I'm Roseanne Aragon. Oh, so powerful. Roseanne, thanks so much. And by the way, we have such a sweet treat today. Joining us now to share their inspiring story, Bishop Fred Jones Sr., his daughter Sabrina Freeman, and the entire Jones family all under one roof. Hi, y'all. Welcome to Houston Life. Y'all look fabulous. First of all, let's get through this. I love, Bishop, that you say, not today, not today, Satan. <laughs> and then every word of it. I knew I was going to die one day, but not that day. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's feeling good. You all look great. How are you health-wise right now? Everybody's doing real good. We, you know, we're taking it one day at a time. We trust in God for all that he promised, that he'd never leave us nor forsake us. So we're doing real good. And I, I just have a list of names that I would like to I read because right? I feel like this is important. <laughs> Bishop, Bishop Fred Jones Sr., of course, and Sabrina, who Courtney just introduced. But we also have Teresa, Sarah, Velma, Fred, Ernestine, Alexis, Joshua, and I know the late Kenneth Freeman Jones, who passed away 
um, just a few days ago. We are so sorry to hear this news. He played bass for the band as well as some guitar and keyboard. So talk to us just a little bit about the history of this band because 30 years of, of working so closely together and performing, I think what's great about just your sound, the moment the music started, you know you're in for an uplifting experience. And that's really why the band was formed, right? To uplift others. That's exactly it. To bring peace to troubled hearts, to let people know that every sickness is not a sentence unto death, and that God loves you, uh, and he shows it uh, through his handiwork in our lives. So we share the same news with families all over the world. And that is so true. You've performed internationally as well as venues like uh, some small places, the Lincoln Center, the Kennedy Center. No big deal, right? Um, I think what's so wonderful, though, in, in sharing your story, but the, not only the power of song, but the power of praise and where it takes a moment to just find the gratitude, find a moment to breathe, um, I think says a lot for um, kind of pushing the restart button. Listening to you, you should be a Jones family singer. Okay, I'm, I'm on. <laughs> you got it down to the T. But we want to encourage everybody because, uh, as I said, there is a life to be lived. And God wants you to live it to the fullest. So be encouraged. That's our job, to encourage you. And guys, talk to us just a little bit about how your family coped through this COVID experience, because obviously we know it is a very big deal. People get very, very sick. And uh, as in Roseanne's piece, we just heard that everyone was hospitalized except one. And talk to us about that time, because not only are you going through the process of healing, but that must have been a very emotionally tough time on your family when you're accustomed to being out there in the community, travel, traveling and spreading joy. Yes, it has been and hi, I'm Sabrina and I'm just happy to be here with you all. It has been a very, 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 very much pressing, uh, but we do and we go through by faith. Our daddy has uh, taught us faith since we was real little and we trust God and um, through all our pain and through everything we have went through uh, from the teaching and by loving on each other, loving on other people. Um, this is how we make it, you know. So uh, we're doing it now, you know, even with uh, the death of our uh, brother, we're uh, doing it through Christ, moving on. We are in him by even coming today because this is what he would want us to do. So uh, our faith is what keep us going. Our faith kept us going through tough times and it's keeping us going now. It's so wonderful to see a family not only singing and praising together, but making others feel that special bond as well. Um, let's talk about Praise on the Green. That's an event that's coming up on Saturday um, from 9.30 to 4. This is for everyone, right? Yes, it's for everyone, but virtually. Uh, because of the pandemic, they mm -hmm. put some guidelines uh, in place that we can't have a lot of people on the actual grounds, but uh, uh, we decided to reach out uh, to the whole world and nine other groups joined us to encourage the world to know that uh, uh, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Mm. And that's, that's what it's based upon. So all you have to do is have a cell phone, iPad, uh, a desktop or whatever, and you have the best seat in the house right where you are. Oh, very well said. All right, Jones Family Singers, don't go anywhere. Sit tight, because after the break, we're going to have a very nice performance from you folks. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Before the break, we introduced you to these lovely people, the Jones Family Singers. That is right, and here they are now with a special performance of I Can See the Sunshine. I can see the sun shining through the rain. Y'all listening, you bless. See the 
brightness of the sun's rays. The sun is shining down on me, giving me total victory. Now I am happy and I can say there will be no more cloudy days. I can see the sun Sun shining through. I can see it shining, shining, shining through. Let me say another verse. The winds have started to blow, and the thunder begins to roar. Dark clouds far up above, and now the rain is beginning to fall. The Jones family singers, I've already renamed y'all to the hippest family on the planet. <laughs> y'all were so fantastic, and I have to tell you, in a world with a lot of negativity right now, you sure know how to lift someone's spirits. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was also fun uh, watching your faces during that performance. We could see you here in the studio, and I can tell you guys are grooving. And. Uh, we again want to thank each one of you by name. The Jones Family Singers, Sabrina, Teresa, Bishop Fred Jones Sr., Sarah, Velma, Fred, Ernestine, Alexis, and Joshua. Thank you so much for your time today and also for sharing your talents with the world.
Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Continued great health to all of you as well. And a reminder that you can catch the Jones Family Singers this Saturday at Praise on the Green. We do have a link for this free virtual event. Details are all on the website. Very, very nice. And we will be right back with more Houston Life. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, Wine Club Wednesday, yes. folks. Can you believe it's that time? And this time, we're focusing on boxed wine. And we have trend report with Marzi for fashions on how to beat the heat, you know, with that mask included. And, of course, a lot of tie-dye. Gotta love a good trend report. Well, let's toss it over to Keith and Christine standing by with the news at 4 o'clock. Hi, guys.